the candles. Great, thank you. So I just want to invite you to close your eyes if it's comfortable for you to do so. And if you're standing, just softening your knees a little bit. And I want you to just, just notice if there is any place in your body that can soften just a little bit more, maybe just the muscles around your jaw or the muscles in your belly. In fact, if it's, be mindful of your candle, but if it feels natural to just find a little stretch or a little twist or a little reach, ah, a little yawn, to just take a moment to just consciously loosen any part of your body that might be gripping or clenching or holding tension that doesn't need to be there in this moment. Any stretch or just the mental awareness of conscious relaxation. And we're just gonna take a moment to take a breath. And in a moment when we take our breath together, if you'd like, you can unmute yourself so that we can hear the collective exhale. So if you're able to, feel free to put your candle down if it's like the mute and the candle. <laughs> Go ahead and unmute yourself. I'm gonna put the candle back here by the ascending angel. And let's go ahead and just take a deep breath in, breathing right into the center of your heart. Exhale with a sigh or a sound. <sighs> and go ahead and just allow that breath to just inspire any additional movement or stretch. Any place in your body that's just maybe asking for a little extra attention. We're going to take one final breath together. So when you're ready, go ahead and take a deep breath in right to the center of your heart. And exhale. <sighs> so beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to sit back down and you're welcome to as well. Find the perfect place for your candle. And... Let's go ahead and dive it in. If you'd like to mute yourself, you can go ahead and actually I'll mute everybody just because of sound, etc. Um, and we'll be using our chat box a lot to stay stay connected. So I'll I, like I said, I'll make this interactive. So I wanted to I'll introduce myself in a moment. I wanted to give you this start with a beautiful quote. This is there's a, a woman who is uh, connected to our community, Shiloh Sophia McLeod. Some of you might be um, familiar with her art. Um, she's been involved peripherally with the Fem Talks community for a very long time, and she has this beautiful quote. Uh, oh, thanks, Alina. Alina said um, that I look beautiful, and I was just like, oh, I've got my 80s look going on. I've got my jewel tones and my pink lips and my big hair. So thank you, Alina. So the quote is, we believe there is medicine, sacred and true, in community. It comes with the territory of belonging, of being part of something bigger than you and me, a place where the collective soul can unfurl her wings, and together we can fly into a future that reflects who we are and what we care about. Beware of old ideas falling away. Beware of no longer being willing to live a life that does not reflect who you are. Your cup of revolutionary tea with the muse is waiting for you. So I want to invite you to just take a big breath into the invitation of that beautiful poem. So you're here with me today for this. Um, uh, so some of you are messaging me privately and it makes it hard because I'm trying to message everyone so it's going to cause a little extra time so try to message me publicly so I don't have to toggle an extra thing. Um, she does have a website you can just search for her. she's a famous artist so Shiloh Sophia McLeod just search for her you'll find all kinds of good stuff. Um, so you're here for this lovely master class and my intention is really that this is a circle that we get to just do a bunch of rituals together and um, I'll talk a little bit more about my intentions for our time together in a moment. So I'm Jessica. I'm Jessica Hadari. Most of you know me. I support spiritually oriented business owners, women, to build prosperous, heart-centered businesses in relaxed feminine ways. Um, I'm the founder of Fem Talks, which is a sanctuary of events and community for 
uh, women leaders and healers. And I've been a business coach for 15 years. I'm a master business coach, which just means that other business coaches in the community hire me for my experience and my, my insights. And I will just conclude my introduction by saying that I believe the most important business strategy, like the foundational business strategy that is the most important is to weave the sacred into every part of your business. So if that resonates with you, feel free to type into the chat box if something resonates. Um, and uh, I always like to, to kind of see that and acknowledge that. It helps me to kind of know how things are landing. Um, and I also just want to take a moment to acknowledge you. Connecting in circle with women like you is where I get my best ideas and downloads. In conversation, in collaboration, in limbic resonance is where I, see, re I receive my deep downloads. And we are, as women, in great need of aligning with the support of tribe and sisters who are also aligned, sisters who are expanders, right? So that we are coming together supported by each other and by divine guidance. And one of the kind of mistakes that I see even really powerful women make that gets in the way of manifesting and creating with ease and consistency is trying to manifest all alone. So I also just want to name that there have been so many recent well-vetted studies that show that when women connect, even virtually, we start to produce a different set of hormones. We produce pleasure hormones, we produce hormones of relaxation, and those hormones are incredibly nourishing to our immune systems, and they are the antidote for stress hormones. Um, they kind of help kind of flush out stress hormones. So being in sisterhood is a cure for overwhelm. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this concept of expanders. And this is, um, this is a quote from Lacey Phillips, who is a manifestation coach, teacher. She, taught, she says, when we surround ourselves with women that we admire in our daily lives, we witness our potential. We, we witness, uh, sorry, we, we witness our potential greater than we currently are and where we are capable of going. Expanders, women or people who we admire are some of the most valuable energies. They literally expand your belief system when it comes to manifestation. So I want you to write this down. If you have a journal with you or a place to write, surrounding yourself with other women who are a few steps ahead of you or who you find inspiring, especially this, I know this is a community of women entrepreneurs, surrounding yourself with women who are a few steps ahead of you in business or in income is the single most powerful step you can take to increasing your own business and your own income. So part of the intention of this call today is talking about using ritual as a tool for manifestation and therefore prosperity. Um, and I also just want to speak to this piece of comparison because I'm, talk I'm inviting you to um, open deeply to surrounding yourself with inspiring women. And I think sometimes that stirs up the shadow. And part of that shadow is the shadow of comparison. And comparison is uh, an old remnant of oppression. Some, I've even heard it called a weapon of oppression. Comparison is a relic of a tired old paradigm when women did not have power, did not have the power that we have in this time, in this space. So surrounding yourself with other women who are a few steps ahead of you or who you find inspiring is the single most powerful step you can take to increase your own business and income because it expands what you know to be possible for yourself. So I want you to take a moment, your very first exercise that I wanna to give to you is to create a list of expanders, to go ahead and write down women that you are, are people, women, that you are already connected with, that know, like, and trust you, that you know, like, and trust them, that are maybe taking similar stretches as you, or maybe they're a few steps ahead of you. 
and just make a list. Just bring yourself present. And my sense is when we complete this call, you're going to go take your shower later on, or you're going to, you know, go to sleep tonight and wake up in the morning and new, new women are going to, new people are going to kind of want to add themselves to this list. So allow this list to just be alive past the time of our call. Be in the practice of surrounding yourself with awesome, inspiring people. Um, is such a key for manifestation. And I'll talk, actually, Oprah talks about this and I'll quote her a little bit later. Um, I run uh, business mastery circles for my clients. So my clients all come together in circle, virtual and live. And right now I have about 20 clients who have six figure and multiple six figure businesses. So when women step into my circles, they are stepping into a space with women who are, have, have created themselves as wealthy women healers. And being in that sister, sisterhood starts to normalize everyone's beliefs about what is possible around our income, around what we can create, around what's possible for women, what's possible for healers, um, as well as just sharing resources and just a sense of being in this together, which makes it easier for it makes us it makes it easier for us to be aligned women trailblazers who are mending our planet together so this is what i'm passionate about i am passionate about women coming together i'm passionate about making some magic during this pause i know in my life anytime i've been forced to pause because of illness or when my son was little having a little baby there have been times there are times in our life where we are forced to pause and every time I can look back in my life where I was forced to pause, even if it was really uncomfortable, what I was able to create in that pause was always so much deeper and usually so much more creatively informed or divinely informed than if the pause had never happened. So in this moment, I'm choosing to look at this pause as a really great gift. This is a perfect time to make inquiries into your business or your leadership path, to vision, to revision, to lay powerful plans for your summer and your fall. This current moment, a lot of women are totally out of their bodies right now, very ungrounded, lost in anxiety and overwhelm, and that's completely understandable. But intensity, like when shit hits the fan, as it will again and again through the course of our lives, uh, my wish is that the intensity draws you even deeper into your soul path, that the intensity draws you deeper into your mission, your vision, your creation, your leadership. And to really own that, like, I am responsible for both my overwhelm and my center. So this call is also an invitation for you to harness your anxieties as gateways, as fuel. This is an intense opportunity to support your spiritual alchemy because you all are deeply on your paths as healers and light workers. You are a leader. People around you look to you for wisdom and guidance and waking women this is time for us to walk our talk when it comes to our feminine leadership and your feminine leadership starts with you. So when you are in your center, you are an attractor. When I'm in my center, that in itself is inherently attractive and it makes it easier to manifest. So my intentions for our time together is I'd like to give you an oasis of resources that nourish you as a deeply centered woman leader that you walk away from our time together feeling your spiritual path under your feet, that you feel that you're deeply resourced to be a beacon of light in your community because you still have seeds to pass on as blossoms, lady, and you still have blossoms to be passed on as fruit, even now. And I have found that ritual draws us more deeply into our higher power, our deep knowing, our center. Ritual is such a beautiful, profound way to expand our capacity while crisis is happening. So I want you to leave this session grounded and present and spacious, and, I, and we'll take some time to tap into the wisdom of your higher self. So I want to just do a little thought exercise real quick. Um, earlier, we lit candles. And I just want to ask, for you to ask yourself, 
how you can make your entire workspace into an altar moving forward. Sometimes I come to these calls and women don't, like, they don't, like I always keep a candle by my workspace um, as a symbol of I am now weaving the sacred around my work versus kind of mindlessly hopping onto my computer. Um, so I'm a fan of just like making the whole workspace an altar. Um, and I want you to just be in that inquiry and you can type your thoughts uh, or your kind of commitments to yourself in the computer, uh, into the chat box, sorry. If you have a laptop and you like to travel around, maybe you have some kind of like little travel pouch that has your, you know, your little odds and ends or a little compute, little, um, I keep saying computer, little candle. <laughs> um, I also want to presence my partner, Michael, has been, uh, for the last few weeks, has been working entirely in the woods. Like he lives here, but he's been going out to the woods and using his phone as a mobile hotspot and just doing all of his work surrounded by nature. So I want to invite you with this exercise of how can you treat your entire workspace as an altar to, um, to really take that on? What does that look like for you? And I'd love to see some, some shares in the chat of maybe like, Ooh, I'm going to keep my essential oils by my altar or, Ooh, I have some elixirs or I have these, um, little, all like my, I can't tip it cause they'll fall out, but like my burnable, like incenses and things like that, that I always keep next to my workspace. So I'd love to see some thoughts. Oh, no one has shared. No ideas. Love to hear some of your ideas of how you can treat your entire workspace, your computer area as an altar. A beautiful Kavita sharing ritual to start the day, candle plus essential oils and crystals by my computer. Gorgeous. Yes. Ashera says, have candles and goddess tapestry already. Beautiful. Gorgeous. I have my mission statement by my altar. Crystals, Lakshmi statues, singing bowl. Oh, it's going fast. Good. Oh, this is awesome. It's faster than I can read it, but I'm so happy to see the fountain of wisdom here and inspiration. I was guided about six months ago to dismantle my actual altar. I had like one main altar space. And in a ritual, I was guided to surround myself with my altar items and kind of make my whole sanctuary an altar. So this invitation is just a, a ripple effect from that, a ripple of that, that ritual. So let's just take a moment to just take another breath together. If you want to unmute yourself, great. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Let's go ahead and just take a deep breath right into your heart center. And exhale with a sigh or a sound. <sighs> Beautiful. So here's our agenda. In a few moments, here's what we're going into. We haven't even started yet. <laughs> I'm going to be giving you the three portals to open yourself to manifest and receive even more, and I find to expand past your glass ceilings. And I am um, also want you to understand how to use um, rituals to familiarize your mind and body with abundance, to cut through overwhelm and step forward with clarity so that you can embody and generate your vision, embody and generate wellness and prosperity from a relaxed place. And we'll also talk a little bit about ritualized states of pleasure to manifest and the science of how pleasure is an antidote for stress. We talked about that a little bit, and but how it can actually rewire your mind for magnetism and confidence and clarity. And for those of you that want more, I'm not doing any selling on this. This is really meant to be a circle, but those of you that do want more, I will let you know a little bit about um, my business mastery circles and a, just a special invitation to work with me or join my business mastery circles at a deep discount. Um, but I won't be doing any selling during our time together here. So, all right, everyone, are you ready to dive in? I'm excited to start. So let me take a big sip of water. <laughs> Self-care. <laughs> and a sip of tea. Okay. 
So the three portals to, oops, the three portals these, to open yourself, to manifest and receive more and expand past your glass ceilings. Align, transmit, and ground. And these can kind of be in any order, so I'm not speaking to these hierarchically. Um, but we'll speak to the first one, which is align. The first portal is align. So when I am aligned, we're going to do a ritual um, in a moment. When I'm aligned, I'm, uh, I'm in daily connection to the divine. I'm engaging in radical self-care. And for the most part, nothing can pull me out of my center when I'm in that space. When I align from the core of who I am, my values, my vision, my mission, I become more creative. I definitely become more productive with less efforting. And I move through the world in my sovereignty. When I'm aligned, I'm attracting people and opportunities who are in alignment with my values and what I'm creating. And when you are aligned, people can feel that you are in alignment with your medicine. So alignment as a portal for attraction and therefore prosperity is kind of what we're, we're going into here. So this is, alignment really is all about owning your medicine, right? Owning the medicine that your business is for the world, owning the medicine that you are for the world, own our, and the question, are you owning your medicine? So I, um, I am in deep appreciation for the business that I have because I can connect with you virtually. Very, very grateful that I'm not a waitress right now, that I am not directly impacted by what is happening at this time. Um, and I've had conversations with women who are nervous about their businesses because they're like, well, I, well, Jessica, I don't have an essential business. I don't have a business that people will like pay for right now. So I want you to ask yourself, I want you to question yourself. Like that, that may be true, but I want you to ask yourself, how can you create your business as essential? Like what is the deeper transformation that you offer to people? what is the like deeper cut of what you're meant to be offering so this is a really great time a very potent time to ask yourself are you owning your medicine in your messaging are you owning your me your medicine even in your pricing are you owning your medicine when you are out in the world connecting about your business or talking about your business so i'll just i'll leave you with those questions oh maybe i'll just put those here so they're from my notes they probably have typos, but those are some questions I want you to just take with you. So I'll, well, I want to mention a dear sister, Ursula Ferreira, a apothecary for the soul. She has some really beautiful tinctures and oils for anointing, which we'll talk about in a moment. And we'll talk about anointing in a moment. But she also runs a beautiful circle called the Empress Circle, which I get to participate in. I get to lean back and let her lead and I get to just be a participant in it. And it's, it's lovely. And one of the things that we were exploring in her Empress Circle was, what does it mean to be a high priestess, right? And in, in, in place of high priestess, if that does not resonate with you, you could use the word queen or light worker or maybe another archetype that resonates with you more. What does it mean to be a high priestess? I want to take you through a very brief little meditation. Um, so I want to, for you to close your eyes, and you can sit or you can stand. In fact, I'm going to stand because I've been sitting all day. Close your eyes and stand or sit, whatever has you feel most in your body. And I want you to see if you can recognize yourself in her, in the high priestess or the queen or the light worker. So the high priestess, or the queen, or the light worker is the receiver, the holder, and the teacher of wisdom. She deeply listens for divine guidance, and she can see the bigger picture and dream up solutions. 
She deeply listens to her community and she is in service to the higher good of her community. The high priestess does the inner spiritual work on behalf of the community. The high priestess allows herself to be served. In fact, being served is part of her service. And this is where some prosperity comes in. She does the work, the deep work on behalf of the community, and she allows herself to be served. So I want you to just take a moment, you can open your eyes again, and just notice what resonated with you, if anything. And just take a moment, a minute, to just journal anything that you'd like to journal around alignment, around owning your medicine, and around owning your role as the leader or light worker or queen or high priestess of the community or communities that you are a part of or are building your clients, your family. So go ahead and just do a little, just take a minute to do a little bit of journaling around alignment, around owning your medicine. We'll just take a moment here. And if you don't feel like journaling, that's fine. You can continue to sit in meditation or do a little stretch or do a little anointing. We're going to do just a little more journaling in a moment. I'm going to give you another question. Okay. Feel free to continue journaling in that vein if you feel called to after this call, uh, after our time together. So, my next question is, how can you attend, we're getting a little bit into self-care. How can you attend to yourself as a high priestess or queen or light worker, whatever archetype you've chosen that works for you? How can you attend to yourself as a priestess, queen, light worker? I know I'm speaking to the crowd. This is a group of women who are, you're probably very much on top of your self-care. But I want you to make a list of micro rituals. These are rituals that take just one to five minutes. Make a list of micro rituals that would help you attend to yourself as a priestess, as a high queen, as a leader. Because it's easy to talk about ritual and start creating these very elaborate hour long ceremonies for ourselves which aren't sustainable for most of us on a daily basis. So I'm a big fan, before I give you any of these rituals, of you just calling upon your own library of rituals that you can just do in a moment. So that your ritualizing your life, especially right now, is something that is easy and sustainable. So for example, it might be something as simple as just you know, having a conscious cup of tea, where you're having tea, you're not on your phone, you're not on your computer, you're just sitting, you're just maybe a moment of reflection. Maybe you're doing one short yoga flow. I put climb the pole here because I remember talking to a woman who uh, taught pole dancing classes, and she's also a performer, and she's like, I climb the pole every day. And I was like, that must be really good for your core. It gets you in your body. Let's so like, what if maybe it's climbing the pole, you know, um, doing a few deep breaths with an essential oil. Oh, and I love, great, people are putting their own, their own ideas, but it could also be slightly longer rituals like going for a walk, taking a bath, sewing, crafting, painting. For many, since the beginning of time, every single culture, before we were colonized by the West, every single culture, uh, celebrated costume making as a way of communicating with the divine. Crafting, making things with your hands, costume making, sewing, absolutely uh, count as rituals. Um, so I just wanted to presence that because we can get really fancy and um, judgy about how fancy our rituals are. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Lisa says, art night on Zoom tomorrow night at my place. Awesome. Fantastic. So 
I want to, one of the uh, words that Lisa, who just chimed in, talks about, or phrases she talks about is neuroimmunology. And I want to invite you, dur during this pause, when we're all just being very conscientious about our health, I want to invite you to anoint your feet every day. This is a micro, psycho, psycho neuroimmunology. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here. So like, is this how I say it? Psycho neuroimmunology. And um, anointing your feet um, can be a powerful way, depending on what you're using, to, to fluff up your immune system. So like I take this, this is just a, a bottle that was used for something else. I put some um, uh, olive oil and a little bit of lavender, a little bit of frankincense. You could also put myrrh, whatever essential oils speak to you, or even just olive oil. But it's a beautiful way to just support your psychoneuroimmunology. Um, and some of you maybe have had some training on how the feet are so connected to the rest of our bodies. You can also, in a bath or a foot bath, is also a great way to actually help remove toxins. Um, so maybe a foot bath or a bath on a regular basis during this time. Um, but also in a more kind of ritualistic or energetic way, this is such a powerful way to just step into your day literally grounded, right? It's the easiest way. Uh, we forget about our feet, all 26 bones of the right foot, all 26 bones of the left foot, and all of the lymph nodes and vessels and fascia and muscle and tendons and ligaments in between. So um, I'm a, what I do in the morning, so I put down a towel on my bed, I sit butterfly style, so my knees are out to the side, and I use my right hand to massage the, mostly the sole and the toes of my left foot and my left hand to massage my right foot the top foot, the top of the foot as well, the soleus is also uh, really great to massage. It just takes a few minutes and it completely resets my nervous system. So we're gonna do a ritual where we're gonna be standing up, but in a moment I'm gonna invite you to actually massage your feet while I'm talking. <laughs> so you don't need any oil or lotion for it, but let's go ahead and stand up. We're gonna do a ritual together. Okay, so um, sometimes I call this, uh, this, you could call this like a fear or shadow disentanglement ritual. Um, I'm going to call it a connection to higher self ritual. So this is a time that we're in where tensions are high, we're grappling with things that are unexpected, you might feel a sense of stretch or overwhelm, and all of that is completely normal. All of that is completely understandable. But what we're going to do in this ritual is you're going to take a fear or an anxiety, and it doesn't have to be a specific fear. Could it just be the sensation of fear or the sensation of anxiety or the sensation of stretch? This ritual can also be used if you're feeling entangled with a person. So if there's somebody in your life that you're kind of feeling that tension or tangle with, or you're feeling kind of in, in, enmeshed in, maybe your mind kind of is like thinking about them a lot. Uh, this is great for that kind of that scenario as well. If you're looking at me right now in the screen, and you're like, well, Jessica, I'm just really in my gratitude in my heart right now. I don't really have a fear or an overwhelm or a person to use for this ritual. You can also call on maybe an old tangle. Maybe there's like, a wonky relationship with a sibling or your mom or something like that that isn't maybe not so present right now. So I want you to just take a moment to kind of decide what energy or person you would like to um, kind of soothe or, uh, or nourish during this time. So you're not going to, uh, when I say nourish, I mean you're nourishing, you're going to be nourishing yourself. The ritual will start with us relating with the fear, the overwhelm, or the person that you've chosen, and I'll walk you through that. But then you're actually going to be turning and connecting your, connecting your energy to your higher self, kind of a, a, a visual uh, visualization of your higher self. So just make sure whatever space you're in that you can turn one way and that you can clearly turn a different direction, just so you physically have a sense of facing one thing, 
and then facing another thing, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna get a sip of water. Go ahead and find a stretch so that you feel like you're in your body. And if you're just like in a place where you're like, I really don't wanna be standing right now, maybe you can just perch yourself on the edge of your couch or your chair so that you're still kind of in a, an engaged stance. So let's take a moment. If you don't have a lot of sound around you, go ahead and unmute yourself just so we can hear each other's breaths during this entire ritual. If you have sound, you can keep yourself muted. That's okay. Ah, so this is the connection to higher self ritual. But we're gonna start by clearing a little bit of the shadow. So go ahead and face whatever direction you're guided to face. For the part of the ritual where we'll be looking at this fear or anxiety, I'm just gonna call it the shadow. Whether we're talking about a person or a, a felt experience, okay? So go ahead and just take a moment to face this direction that you've chosen. And you can keep your eyes open or closed and you can bring any movement into your body that helps you conjure up this uh, sense this shadow that you're working with and I want you to just imagine that this shadow is somehow existing right in front of you it might be a blob or a sense of fog or steam or it might actually be a, a visualization of the actual person that you're calling into this ritual or the energy of that person it could also be an animal or some kind of creature. So there's no right or wrong. It might just be a feeling of density. So I want you to just take a moment to take a deep breath in and out. And I want you to just allow this shadow to just kind of exist right in front of you. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to relate with it in any way. Just allow it to exist right in front of you. It helps you to use your hands to kind of shape the way it's shaped. For me, it's kind of like a blob just kind of this blob shape. So just take a moment to, with your mind, your eyes or your hands, just take a moment to allow it to take its shape. You can trace the shape with your hands or just imagine it in front of you. There's no right or wrong way. Once you have a sense of the shape of this shadow, this fear or anxiety or person, I want you to take a moment to now allow yourself to look at the space in between your body and the shape of this, the shape of the shadow. And I want you to notice if there are any cables or cords or connections between your body and this thing. And just noticing, you can even physically look down and just see any sense of fog or cords or chains. Could be something that looks more like a bridge or a laser. Just notice the way that your body is entangled with this shadow. And I want you to just begin to use your healing hands, your physical healing hands, to just start to sweep away or unplug or remove these cables, these cords, these connections. And if you'd like to physically sweep your hands and literally clear the space, I want to invite you to just trust your intuition. And while we're sweeping away these cables and cords and connections, I want you to go ahead and just take a couple of deep breaths for yourself. Just in and out. Ah. Letting your inhale flow into your body. I'm just creating some space, some clear space between your physical body and this shadow. All right. Take just another moment if there's any final wisps. If you're coming up against a, a connection or a chain or a cord that's particularly stubborn, you can go ahead and imagine that your hands are like lasers and just kind of laser through. And just really trust your, your power, your intuition. 
<sighs> and I want you to just take a moment to allow this shadow to recede a little bit, maybe a foot or two or three, just allow yourself a little more space from the shadow now that you've physically cleared the space between you. Ah, we're gonna go ahead and just, we're just gonna let the shadow be there, all right? And we're just gonna turn maybe a quarter, uh, 45 degree angle or 90 degree angle. You're gonna turn. And I want you to just start to visualize in front of you a visual representation of your higher self. If it's easier to imagine a visual, a visual representation of yourself as the high priestess or a goddess or a queen or a slightly older version, older, wiser version of you, please call on any imagery that calls her, the high priestess, your higher self, your deep knowing. And I want you to just allow her to appear before you. What does she look like? What is she wearing? How is she adorned? Just take a moment to take your hands and I want you to trace her shape. Maybe she has a human form. Maybe she has an animal form. Maybe she's just an energy. That's fine. Just allow your hands to just trace her shape. She has feet all the way down to her feet. And all the way back up. And I want you to imagine if she has eyes, I want you to imagine just looking right into her eyes. If she doesn't have eyes, just get a sense of a heart connection with your higher self standing before you. <coughs> I want you to take a moment. This is kind of the opposite. You're gonna look down at the space between your physical body standing here and her energetic body <laughs> in front of you. And I want you to actually take a moment to again, use your healing hands to make connections between your physical body and this visual representation of your higher self. So you're actually trying to create cords and cables and maybe it looks like a beautiful strands of jewels or necklace or however however you'd like to visualize connecting your physical body to her tying yourself to your higher self i'm gonna close my door to my dog's way <laughs> she's activated by this ritual and just uh, you know don't forget your knees don't forget your ankles don't forget your toes go ahead and just create connection between your entire body your knees, your pelvis, your belly, your heart, tethering yourself, connecting yourself to your higher self. And go and allow yourself to take a couple of deep breaths as you complete this. Ah, breathing into the deliciousness of connecting more deeply, reconnecting with your higher self in this ritualized physical way. Mm. Once you feel complete, I want to invite you to just, again, just fully face her, feel her presence, this presence of this embodied visualization of your higher self and your embodied sense of your connection. And go ahead and just put your hands on her. Maybe it's her shoulders or if it's more of an energy, just kind of making a physical connection with your hands and just turn over your shoulder and just look back at the shadow. And I want you to just take a moment in your own way. You can do it as a whisper, you can do it quietly inside, you can do it out loud if you feel muted or unmuted. I want you to just take a moment to actually bless the shadow and give the shadow permission to recede. And it's okay if the shadow does not completely go away. Our emotions, our experiences, our relationships are sometimes cyclical. So this isn't about um, banishing, but just blessing in connection with your higher self and giving the shadow permission to recede. 
turn down the volume, to fade into the background. And just take a moment to take a breath into that. <sighs> if there's any physical movement that you'd like to do with your body to just anchor in an experience of being more connected to your higher self, feel free to do that. And if it feels comfortable to embrace her and just completely gather her into your body, completely gather her energy, which is yours, into your body, any way that you'd like to complete the ritual, becoming complete for now. Beautiful. When you're ready, you can go ahead and find your seat. So much for playing with me. Uh, it's a ritual that you can do in just two minutes, or you could take 30 minutes to do this ritual. But it's a powerful ritual if you are, sorry for my dogs, if you're finding yourself just really glomming on to a person or a feeling, and it's just you're having a really hard time coming back into equanimity. Um, so yeah, I'd love to just hear in the chat box. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I'd love to just put a, a couple of shares. Melissa says, whew, amazing release. Beautiful. Any other shares, feel free to bring them into the chat box. Just a name for yourself. So as we go into this next section, I actually do, oh beautiful, Gail says liberation. I actually want to invite you, I'm going to go ahead and mute you all again. Uh, I want to invite you during this next session section to go ahead and massage your feet. You don't have to have lotion or oil, but I want you to just uh, go ahead and actually like take a moment to take a foot, take two feet, go ahead and massage your feet if you can. If you're just like, Jessica, you're crazy. That's okay. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to do any of the things I ask you to do, but go ahead and just massage your feet a little bit. Um, I wanted to share very, very briefly my own journey with uh, pleasure and um, talking, kind of bringing that into the completion of this portal, which is alignment. Um, I mentioned earlier that I feel very blessed. I have a business that I feel really nourished by. So many of my clients are true friends. I just feel very, very close to the women that I get to work with. I have a wonderful partner. I have a really wonderful son who's 18. Um, growing up, I was a competitive athlete. I grew up in a military family in a conservative Christian household. And um, it, I, was, I was under contract by the time I was 13 as a competitive athlete. So I was raised with a lot of mindset around go, 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 and you pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you make it happen. Like I was raised with this kind of type A, you know, motivation background. Um, in my 20s, I switched gears and I became a highly trained holistic health coach. Um, but even with that training, I started to develop stress-related illness. And that showed up as adrenal fatigue. Uh, I also had chronic pain from a neck injury. And it turned into um, having part of my cervix removed uh, because I had ab abnormal uh, cells on my cervix, pre-cancerous pre uh, cells on my cervix, and I uh, ended up developing autoimmune disorders, and I ended up having shingles 12 times. So even being at the computer and any kind of marketing, like, physically hurt my body, and my son remembers me, like, under the covers in chronic pain, um, and I hit total rock bottom. I actually was on food stamps for about three years during my 30s. Um, and I ended up, because I kind of had no other choice, weeding out of my life, my first step to being where I am now and being in the health that I have now 
is that I, the first step was that I weeded out anything in my life that felt like a should. I weeded out anything that caused adrenaline or stress and I started sorting for pleasure. And I started to weave pleasure in with my prayers and my visualizations and my affirmations and my rituals. And without doing any additional like marketing or making any changes to my business, suddenly my events were full. I, the shingles virus uh, disfigured my face. It still shows a little, you'll probably see a little bit of paralysis still, but it used to be much more disfigured. And even with my disfigured face, I attracted three men who wanted to spend their lives with me. I, ch I chose the best one. <laughs> and even with the low energy of illness, I was able to build a six-figure business working only three days a week with a relaxed schedule that took care of my health. So I started to use ritual and pleasure and even sex magic, which I'm not going to get into too much in this call, but I'm happy to answer your questions. I started to use ritual and pleasure to amplify, amplify my field and call in greater opulence and opportunities. I engaged in radical self-care and magnetized an amazing team of healers to heal my illness. But I used pleasure as the gateway to my prosperity and it completely elevated my life. So there's this wonderful book called The General Theory of Love that's all about the science of um, love and trust and bonding. It's written by three medical doctors at Stanford, but it's written like a love letter. It's a beautiful book. And they talk about how your clients, your partners, your children, people that you're caring for in some capacity, all have a deep human need to connect with a healthy and whole limbic system. So your clients hire you because they sense in you that you have a, an organized limbic system that they can trust, right? And so when you're, in, when you're overwhelmed and you're stressed and you're in scarcity, or you're not fully aligned with what you are speaking or offering out into the world, your clients and potential clients and partners and your kids pick up on that. So we'll talk a little bit more later about the science of how you can use pleasure as an antidote for stress and rewire your mind for uh, attraction. But I just wanna name that you can use pleasure to feel what is truly in alignment. You can use pleasure as a signpost of alignment. So if you're trying to manifest something that is not in alignment, then you will notice that thing will pull you out of pleasure, right? If you're trying to make a bad relationship work and trying to effort in your business versus attracting and magnetizing, like you, you will have the experience of like, uh, in your business or like, uh, in your bad relationship. So I want to invite you to start following pleasure, to start sorting your choices that you make in your business, in your messaging, the choices that you make in your relationships, um, not using pleasure as a spiritual bypass, but noticing like, where does your body literally tell you this is a yes or this is a no? And you can also use pleasure to elevate your consciousness, right? Pleasure just, it feels good. And again, we're going to talk more about this later, but people feel your light and your intentions and want to be around you when you are in a, an elevated state of consciousness, when you are in your positivity, not from a spiritual bypass place, but because you have done the work of getting into gratitude or getting into pleasure. Um, and rituals are such a great way to do that. So that leads us to the second portal to open yourself to manifest and, uh, and expand past your glass ceilings, which is to transmit. So transmit, transmission, transmitting. Um, before we go into this, I have a free gift for you that I want to give to you that has more rituals that we can't get into during this time together. And this is my um, opulent woman self-care pleasure package. It's completely free and it's just the intention is that you are expanding your capacity to, to attract and receive while stressing less. It's got rituals and meditations to clear irritable thoughts and take the reins of your consistent energy levels and mood balance. Um, I'll go a little bit more into the science than we're able to today with a couple of videos to understand the science 
how it can reset your nervous system, uh, which gets into this whole elevated states of consciousness that we're talking about here. And um, yeah, so the link is there and you can grab that completely free. Most of you're already on my email list, so this is not a ploy to get you onto my list. You're already there. So just enjoy the, enjoy the gifts. So let's take a moment to take a breath. <sighs> We're talking about transmission. So Oprah, I promised you an Oprah quote, when asked about how she achieved success, Oprah said, my life is fueled by my being and the being fuels the doing. So I come from a centered place. I come from a focused place. I come from compassion. Appreciating whatever shows up in your life changes your personal vibration. You radiate and generate more goodness. And she said the single greatest thing you can do to change your life today would be to be thankful for what you have. You will end up having more. She also said, surround yourself only with people who are going to lift you higher which we talked about earlier. So I just want you to just type in the chat box, yes or no, if you have ever experienced Oprah transmitting. You could also ask yourself the same question about Miriam Williamson. Sorry, Miriam Williamson, <laughs> Clarissa Pinkola Estes, Maya Angelou. If you've ever like heard their voices or seen them, seen them speak, if you've experienced them transmitting. I give these examples just so you kind of have that hit of like, what is Jessica talking about, right? So transmitting is very different from working hard or pursuing or hunting. In order to manifest from a place of transmission, number one, you need to deepen your trust that it's even possible to attract, to attract from a place of transmission, right? And you also need to expand your capacity to deeply rest and receive. So you can create from a place of generating versus pursuing. And the other piece, which is what we're gonna talk about here, is embody, embodying, and what Oprah was talking about, embodying a desired state right? She talked about gratitude and being and being centered. Embodying a desired state and transmitting that state in order to attract, right? So let me type that in here. Oh, the, the number one, the number two, and the number three didn't show up, but you're welcome to copy that for your notes. So watching the Oprah show back when it was, well, I guess she has her, her whatever, her her new show now, but I remember back when I was younger, watching the Oprah show is, is often a transmission of celebration, of vulnerable sharing, of truth telling. To transmit as a portal for attraction is to elevate your consciousness, to do the work to elevate your consciousness and your energy so that people feel your light, they feel your intentions, and they want to be around you. So this is also about attracting in the right people who can support me on my journey, attracting not only clients uh, or not only attracting a romantic partner, et cetera, but attracting awesome sisters that I can link elbows with and we can walk, we can link arms and move forward together. So we're gonna do another ritual and yeah, I'm gonna make you stand. And this is what I call the heart grid ritual. In the past, I've called this the four directions ritual, but it's not contingent on any direction. Um, so I wanna invite you to go ahead and stand up again. It's like church, you stand up again. So the heart grid ritual, I do, I've done this ritual. This is actually one of the ways that I fill my events. Uh, is this, this ritual was one of the most pivotal rituals. When I started to do this, I just like almost overnight, my monthly networking events, like 80 women started attending my, my events. Um, and it was just the only change I made was this ritual. So you can use this to call people in to your field 
in this moment where we are very aware of our, our health and the health of our loved ones, you are welcome to use this ritual as a way of offering healing from your field. So the heart grid ritual is great for calling people in to a program or a workshop or into your practice or your business, but it's also really wonderful in sending loving healing light out because it's kind of all the same. Um, so I love that this the ritual c carries the kind of infinity symbol of giving and receiving, that there's no separation between the giving or the receiving. So the heart grid ritual is just, we're gonna do a short version. Sometimes I'll take 20 minutes to do this. I'll put on some beautiful music and I'll actually dance this ritual. But what I want you to do is just, to just take a moment. Um, we're gonna use this tonight as a healing, but I want you to just know that you can use this to call people in. So I want you to just take a moment, wherever you're at, I want you to go ahead and just face San Francisco. I think most of you are in the Bay Area, so I'm just gonna use Bay Area locations. But as best you can, position your body so that you are facing the uh, actual San Francisco city. And I want you to just take a moment to put your hands on your heart, soften your knees a little bit, take a breath. And I want you to just, in your mind, call up in your mind a person or two or three that might be living in San Francisco at this time. And if you don't know anyone in San Francisco, it's fine, you can face a different direction or a different location. And I want you to just take a moment to take a few breaths to just wrap those individuals in, in your love, like you could just give them a big virtual warm hug. And if we had music and we were dancing, then you could imagine even that you're maybe dancing with them. But I want you to just take a moment to just call them in your mind and wrap them in your love. Send them your highest intentions and prayers for healing, for wellness, for prosperity. If you're using this as a manifestation ritual, then you would be doing the same thing. You'd be connecting with them. And then you'd be kind of calling them into your energy. But we're going to just send healing out this evening. And take a moment just in your mind's eye to offer these individuals, maybe it's a whole collective, maybe you have a whole family or a whole community in San Francisco right now. So maybe it's dozens or hundreds of people and you can just kind of see them as a crowd. It's fine if you can't see individual faces. And I want you to just take a moment to find a gesture of gratitude that you can share with them. Maybe it's a bow, maybe blowing them a kiss, and just take, maybe it's wrapping your arms as if you could give them a big hug with your arms or your wings. And just take a moment to find that gesture of gratitude. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to face the North Bay. So facing Marin County, San Rafael, Napa, Sacramento, and just calling up any communities or individuals that you know in this in this area. And same thing, I want you to just maybe you find a gentle rock or sway if that helps you be in your body a little bit more. And you're just sending out your highest intentions and prayers. If there's individual faces that help you connect, great. If not, if it's just a clump or a crowd or a cluster of individuals, that's completely fine. And just taking a moment to wrap them in your love, to hold them in your light, your highest intentions and prayers, to send out just a gentle wish of healing and prosperity. Ah, taking a breath. If we had music, we'd be maybe, there'd be an invitation to maybe dance with them a little bit, share a little bit of energy. Ah, and then go ahead and just finding a gesture of gratitude. And then taking a moment to turn towards uh, it where from where I am, I guess it's uh, east, looking at kind of Oakland and kind of East East Bay, whatever location resonates with you. I'm just taking a moment again to just connect with any community or individuals here. I've got lots of East Bay people, so I'm just imagining the whole crowd. I'm just imagining that we're moving and breathing and swaying together and eye gazing and I'm just going to send them all of my love, highest intentions and prayers for wholeness, wellness, light, 
if I was using this ritual as a manifestation ritual, that I would, once the connection is made, then I would just do like a dance of invitation with them, whatever that wants to look like in my energy and their energy. And just finding a moment to send a gesture of gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Taking a moment to take a breath. Ah, and then finally turning to face maybe the South Bay or any other direction or location that you like to just hold in ritual. And same thing, just bring your hands to your heart or your belly or any other part of your body that wants to be held and just making a connection. Go ahead and just sending your light, your highest intentions and prayers, your warm wishes. Ah. If there are any other tools that you like to draw on during this ritual, you're always welcome to. A sense of drawing energy up through the earth or energy down through the heavens. So this ritual is meant to be paired with any other tools or imagery that is in service to you, to the people that you're holding in your prayers. And we're just going to find that gesture of gratitude, gratitude, gratitude for any individuals or community or tribe that we're facing. If we had a little bit longer, we do a little dance with them. And when you feel complete, go ahead and turn back to the screen. Ah. So again, this ritual can, uh, sometimes I've taken 30 minutes and just, you know, done it as a dance. I'm dancing with all the San Francisco women. I'm dancing with the East Bay women. <laughs> so, like, I have a very childlike relationship with my rituals sometimes, but I uh, just wanted to share that with you. But it can also be done in that, just that, you know, just beautiful, short, a short and sweet way, just feeling connected to your community. So. Oh, awesome. Uh, Ashira says, I'm a Maui. Awesome. Very awesome. So in a moment, we're going to be, feel free to share if you just any kind of lightness of heart that you just want to share in the chat box, please, just to kind of anchor it in for yourself. Beautiful. Oh, awesome. Rhea. Oh, yay. Rhea, the New York City. Oh, my goodness, honey. Our hearts are going out to you, just sending you all the love and light that we possibly can, Rhea. So in a moment, we're going to, oh, beautiful, Elizabeth says relaxation. Oh, good, Liz, I'm so happy. Oh, beautiful. I was, I was thinking about you with this ritual. I was gonna do a different ritual, and then this ritual just really wanted to happen. And um, So I'm gonna switch gears in a moment. We are going to dive a little bit deeper into the third portal which is all about uh, grounding and harmonizing. But I do, I have an invitation for you. So this past three weeks, I just wanna name that 10 new women joined my business mastery circles. And I think that they joined because these are women who understand the value of this pause that we're in. And so I wanted to invite you into a sisterhood of co-creation. I wanna invite you to surround yourself with conscious women leaders like you. I wanna invite you into a community of women who choose collaboration and positive support. Because I know that when I'm surrounded by queens, they deeply reflect to me my value. They awaken my yes to my medicine and my bigger and deeper vision. And they also help me to take aligned action. So what I want for you is to, number one, to stop letting stress pull you out of your center, stop pu pulling you out of your path. I want you to lead and create as a deeply centered woman, regardless of chaos in the world, so that you can create powerfully. Number two, I want you to stop trying to figure it out all alone. I want you to stop trying to do manifestation all alone. And I would love for you to lean back into the support of my mentorship and a tribe of sisters who are also committed to you creating courageously from fulfillment, from freedom, from spaciousness. So please don't isolate 
or sabotage your business during this transformative time. Let's make some magic during the pause. This is the perfect time to make deep inquiries into your business and your leadership path, to vision, to revision, and lay powerful plans for the summer and fall. So please join me. I'd like to invite you uh, to join my business mastery circle, which includes one-on-one -on -one private business coaching with me. And the Business Mastery Circle is a cocoon to build your wings and lovingly accomplish what you said you would this year. It's an incubator that honors your personality, your unique goals and energy levels. And it's a beautiful place where you can build your audience, grow your email list, create community around your message. My Business Mastery Circle is perfect if you know that you could be more visible. And if you're ready to deepen your leadership and show up even more fully in your community, for your community. If you are wanting to create community and then be the leader who leads that community. And if you're willing to look long term and boost your business with profitable programs and workshops that embody the fullness of who you are and increase your income in 2020 and, and, and looking forward into 2021. My wish for you is that you are reaching way beyond your current network through tribal marketing and collaboration. And I'm going to give you new tools every week, every month that propel you forward and so that you're attracting divine right clients and bringing in more revenue. So if any part of you says yes, all you have to do is please text me right now. Uh, I'll go ahead and put my number in the little chat box here. Um, just text me, just make a connection with me. Mo most of you know me, I'm like the zeroiest, pressuriest person ever. Um, but if it feels aligned, if you'd like to find out more about joining my affordable business mastery circles, text me. I'll also ha be happy to offer you a 25% discount should you choose to join. I just wanna make it really easy for you if it's a fit. And I will also gift you my Launch Your Online Program in 90 Days or Less course. Uh, those of you that are currently in the circle, you will also, you also will, be, will get that um, uh, for free. So I'd be honored to connect with you about helping the success of your big vision. Women in this, in this circle have sold their first $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 packages. Um, women come into the circle and they launch workshops and webinars and podcasts and programs and online courses. And there's also this important piece about learning how to attract waves of clients and therefore income again and again in really feminine ways. So for example, even if I don't sign on any more clients before summer, I am set up because I've set up my business to attract waves of clients and therefore income in feminine ways, I, I am set up through the summer. So I would love for you to create new supportive narratives around confidence, around being seen, and around making money. So please text me. Um, the final thing I'll say, and then we're going to go back into our ritual conversation, is the Launch Your Online Program in 90 Days or Less course has everything you need to plan out your course so it deeply serves your clients. You'll also receive a blueprint to create, create course content that inspires your clients to do the work and take action um, instead of passively participating. And I will be with you every step of the way to help you with everything from tech to pricing, to selling your course. So again, if any part of you says yes um, to connecting with me and finding out more about my mentorship or my uh, business mastery circle, just text me. It's a really powerful time to vision with me and lay some powerful plans for your summer and fall and into 2020. So, let's talk about the third portal. The third portal, the final portal to opening yourself to manifest and expand past your glass ceilings so that you can uh, create even more in more relaxed ways is 
all about grounding. And in this case, when we're talking about grounding, we're talking about cultivating your capacity. So I want to talk for a moment about the success flu. And I'm going to reference this book that I referenced a little bit earlier uh, called The General Theory of Love. I don't know why I'm referencing it twice in one webinar, but it just fits. So what the general theory of love talks about, it talks about our limbic system and our nervous system, right? As relates to um, uh, bonding and love and the human experience. One of the things they talk about that translates into business and prosperity is the book talks about if something good comes into your life, but you have not made energetic or psychological space for it, consciously or unconsciously, then that good thing is actually perceived as a threat to your body, to your system. So for example, uh, an example you've probably heard before, most people who win the lottery end up quickly losing it. In fact, when people win the lottery, oftentimes their lives get, actually get worse sometimes. And so I wanted to ask you if you have ever received something big and then gotten sick, or really tired or self-sabotaged. Maybe it was like a birthday or a wedding or a big chunk of income or inheritance or maybe a new client or a new relationship. And you don't have to answer this in the chat, but I wanted to name this success flu. Something good comes into your life and it's, it's new and energetically you're not quite ready to receive that. And so then you end up either getting sick or self-sabotaging or pushing it away. Does anyone resonate with that? Thank you so much for being honest, Ashera. Yeah. Shara says, yes. Lisa, mine too. Janine, yes. Yeah, I absolutely, this is something that I danced with. Absolutely. I would, uh, earlier in my business, I would receive money from a client and I would have to go take a nap as soon as that transaction had happened. It literally like knocked me out to receive money. Um, so I just wanted to name, that's kind of an extreme version, but I just want to say receiving and receiving prosperity and money has not always been easy for me. It's like has, a, has had a physical effect on my body. So I just wanted to name that. So you can actually use pleasure to increase your ability to hold the intensity and the bigness of the life that you are calling in. And I have a feeling we're going to go over our time. <laughs> I'm recording this, so I'll just say, feel free to go back and listen to this piece around uh, using pleasure to expand your capacity. So we'll talk about that more in a moment, but I just wanted to name that. Grounding is also about harmonizing. So we just talked about um, cultivating capacity. Grounding is also about harmonizing. Harmony, being in harmony with your natal agreements, right? Being in harmony with what it was you were put on this planet to do. Harmonizing yourself with the facets of your life, all the facets of your life. Sometimes when we're, we talk about manifestation, um, we focus on just one or two areas of our life. Usually it's love and money. That's uh, uh, sometimes health. But there are all these different other areas of your life, right? Community, self-knowledge, if you think about like the feng shui bagua, right? Um, leisure time, travel, family. There's all these other parts of your life. So harmonizing yourself um, with all the facets of your life, like the, all the parts of your consciously planted and nourished garden. Harmonizing yourself with the divine. I don't know why I look up. Because sometimes I think of the divine as, you know, being earth, but harmon harmon harmonizing yourself with the divine. <laughs> um, in fact, altars, we talked about making your whole workspace into an altar. Altars harmonize your prayers with your surrounding environment, right? An altar is, is what helps you, an altar serves the purpose of creating a sanctuary for your prayers and intentions, like a physical place for your prayers and intentions to be alive. So one of the mistakes that I see even powerful women make that gets in the way of manifesting with ease and consistency 
is that we call on the divine without nourishing our, consistently nourishing our connection to the divine, right? We kind of do like the church thing where we kind of like only go on Sundays, right? So my homework for you, I'll call it home play, during the pause, and I'll write this in the chat box, my home play for you during the pause is to um, create more space in your day-to-day -day life to commune, to commune with your guides, to commune with the divine. This is such a perfect time during this pause. If it resonates more, you can experience this as deepening your connection to your intuition or your higher self. Um, so that's, that's my homework for you. Um, let's talk, ooh, I think we might be able to do it all. Let's talk, I didn't spend much time on the grounding portal, which is cultivating capacity and harmonizing, because we're gonna talk about how pleasure ties into both of those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears to pleasure. So let's talk about using pleasure as a tool, and this relates to manifesting through states of ecstasy. And I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna write that down and a quote, manifesting through states of ecstasy. And one of my favorite quotes is a, a lovely woman, Rowena. She, I was having a conversation with her once and she said, well, Jessica, joy and pleasure are my deep opposition to the patriarchy. And I loved that. I was just like, oh yeah, my pleasure and my joy being in a state of pleasure or joy is a deep opposition to the patriarchy. So I just had to put that quote in here. So many studies have been done only recently at Stanford, at teaching hospitals and research facilities all over the Western world about how women's bodies and brains are designed for pleasure. So I just want to say delicious pleasure is your birthright, right? Your physical scientific birthright. And I want to talk a little bit about the brain's pleasure centers. And I'm going to include this whole, I'm going to include this whole quote uh, in the chat box for you. But I'll read it for you. So there's a book called How to Rewire Your Burned Out Brain. Tips from a Neurologist by Judy Willis, MD. And she says, neurons that fire together, wire together. As you internalize stress, overwhelm, self-doubt, you activate and strengthen your brain's negative reactive neural networks. She says, as these circuits, so basically as you allow yourself to spin out in stress and overwhelm and self-doubt, you actually strengthen those patterns on, in, a, in a neurological way. As she, she goes on to say, as these circuits become the go-to networks, the brain is less successful in problem solving, emotional control, and the lower brain, which is all around scarcity and survival, takes control. But you can use pleasure to reset the circuits that direct your brain to access its highest cognitive resources and creativity so that you have a sense of igniting and moving forward versus an experience of retreating and contracting and collapsing into overwhelm. This is called the reward circuit, which includes all kinds of pleasure from sex to laughter. And I love that she speaks to this last piece, your weapon of mass reconstruction can come from your brain's very powerful desire for its own neurochemistry and the pleasure that it brings. So I want to name that you can pair any rituals that you do, any of those micro rituals that you made a list from, any of the rituals we did today. Uh, I'm going to give you another one before we complete. I also want to name that we're at our time. I'm going to go just a few minutes over, but we're almost done. If you can stay, great. If not, I will send the recording to all of you next week. Um, you can pair your rituals to your, your rituals, your tasks, and your goals with pleasure to rewire your psychology and brain for attracting and receiving more. So let me give you an example. When you're, think, when you're a little kid and you're thinking of the number two 
right? The number two, our, our brain's ability to like understand what number two is happens in one part of the brain. And your ability to understand things like abstract thoughts like plus and minus and equals happen in a different part of the brain. So when you're a little kid and you're thinking of two, two plus two equals four, like that takes time. As we get older, those parts of the brain get more used to quickly being like two plus two equals four. That, that uh, the brain, those parts of the brain actually light up more quickly together. So you can take something like bookkeeping, which is like, uh, and exists in one part of the brain is like uh, bookkeeping and you can pair it with pleasure which is experienced in another part of the brain and you can actually completely change your experience of that task or activity so that's a, kind of an extreme example because i don't think i don't know how many of you are going to be like i'm going to go home and you could totally try that on i've totally done that um, I have had the experience of showing up to my computer because I have, you know, my rituals in place and my, my whole workstation is like an altar space, but also I've done the work to get myself into pleasure. And suddenly it feels like my computer is just surrounded by sparkly energy. Um, so I just wanted to name uh, just the, a little bit of the science of using pleasure as a tool to amplify your rituals. So in a more easy, more accessible way, I just want to name that you can take your favorite visualization exercise or process or ritual, and you can pair it with pleasure, which could look like dance. It could look like walk in nature. It could look like watering your plants. Move some energy. I have I've absolutely played around with sex magic, where I actually am pairing a ritual with self-pleasure. And this is not a sex magic masterclass. I have, I have led self, uh, sex magic masterclasses, so I'm happy to answer your questions and go deeper into that. But um, pleasure, it just, beyond our neurology, it also has this ability to reset our nervous system. And so you can train yourself to start looking at things that feel really heavy in your business or your life and you can actually start to elevate those tasks or those goals or those experiences. Now, the, there's a reason why the very first thing we talked about at the very beginning of our time together was using pleasure as a tool for alignment. Because when I'm talking about using pleasure as a way to rewire your brain and make something that feels heavy now feel a little bit better, we're not talking about spiritual bypass because I. Ideally, you would have already used pleasure to sort for is this task or goal even in alignment in the first place? Maybe it's not your job to do your bookkeeping. Um, one of the first things that I did, even though it was a financial stretch, back when I was when I was coming out of being on food stamps, right? I talked earlier about how I was sick. I was on food stamps because of that. When I was coming out of food stamps, I actually, one of the first things I did was hire a bookkeeper because I just got that it just... I just, I couldn't get it together and then my numbers were getting all messy and then that was having negative impact on my business and my ability to like look forward into the future and be hopeful. So, you know, use pleasure as a way to sort. Is this aligned? Is this not aligned? Um, it's helpful to have the perspective of other wise people around you to say, to kind of give you a, is this kind of a, is your ego speaking to you or is your higher self speaking to you? Like what is the pleasure, you know, it, it can be helpful to just kind of get a little bit of a, a check on that. But once you've done that sorting, then you are left with the tasks and the goals uh, in your business and your life that are aligned. And you can use pleasure to just help to heighten your uh, experience of joy and relaxed nervous system while you engage in those tasks and goals. So train yourself to visualize and create and ritualize in ecstatic states familiarize your body with abundance so that you can embody pleasure to gener generate prosperity so the final ritual that i want to give to you is i call this a grace and ease accelerator ritual it sounds really simple and most rituals are really simple and should be 
but um, I invite you to have some miraculous, miraculous experiences with this. Um, Cause the feedback I've gotten from women is they've had some really miraculous experiences with this ritual. And it is just what I call the priestess bath. So the couple, couple different parts to it. The first part is that you make a bath for yourself. If you don't have a bathtub, you can do a foot bath instead. Make a bath for yourself and you fluff it up as much or as little as you'd like. Put the essential oils, put the salts, put the petals, or just water is completely fine. And you, you uh, enter into the bath with the intention that your higher self knows, not your brain, that your higher self knows what the bath is for is it going to be to just create a clean slate are you going to receive deep downloads in the bath will it be a release of maybe some negative energy that you took on earlier in the day or the week i have found that when i try to make the bath about a certain thing usually something else happens so i just want to invite you to step into the priestess bath just knowing that you're nourishing yourself and just allow um as your nervous system calms down, you're gonna have some insights, you're gonna come into answers for questions you've been holding. Um, just allow the, intend that the bath is going to be transformative or clearing in some way. So that's part one. Part two is once you feel complete, I usually feel complete after about 10 minutes. I'm not a long bath kind of lady, but take your time. Um, and this is particularly powerful when you're menstruating, if you're still menstruating, when you're menstruating, it can be particularly powerful because your menstrual blood is in the bath water uh, as well, if that's comfortable for you. After the bath, you're gonna take some pitchers or bottles and you're gonna collect the water of your bath. Oh, you can also put crystals in the bath. That can be kind of cool. Take a bath with your crystals because they need to be recharged. Um, take pictures of your bath water. And I, the first time I did this, I lived in, in an apartment complex. So I didn't have like, my own land to do this with, but I could still go around the apartment complex. And you pour your bath water in the same way that you might make a salt circle, pour your bath water around the, um, the land that you live on. And if you want to, you can take the crystals that you took the bath with and you can bury them in the earth as well. But it creates this, um, a couple of different things. It takes whatever happened in the bath and allows you to compost that into the earth. But I've also found that there's something about the priestess bath that ties me to the earth and I'm able to use the entire area that I'm dwelling, dwelling on. I'm able to use the land almost as a giant crystal. So that when I'm doing the heart grid ritual, which we did earlier, and when I'm doing the, um, the uh, higher self ritual that we did earlier, that I find myself able to draw on a source that is bigger than myself. And I have definitely experienced my rituals being massively potentized because it's not just little old me in communication with the divine creating a ritual, but it's like, I have sewed my energy into the land and have and feel the support of the land. So that's been my experience. I've also had women tell me, like a, a, my friend Christelle did this, and she poured it on her on her flowers, and her neighbor had the exact same flowers. Like it's like they have like this little like five feet strip between their houses, and her flowers were like way bigger and <laughs> grew like way bigger and like bloomed longer. Um, I will sometimes put the waters in my orchids. My orchids bloom all the time. So I just wanted to give you this, this priestess bath ritual to expand your capacity to rest and receive so that you're creating from a place of resting and attracting, but also that you're actively embodying a desired state of neutrality or upliftment. Uh, or authentic gratitude or joy because you're resetting your nervous system and it allows you to literally ground your prayers right literally sew them into the ground so hopefully that was clear uh, hopefully that was helpful well at least it was like will do <laughs> awesome um oh i love that you're making connections too in the chat so that's basically it we wow we covered a lot 
Um, I wanted to open it up for Q&A, and you're welcome to just take off whenever you'd like to take off, but I'm here. So I'm actually gonna stop the recording. I wanna thank you so much for being here, for just being in this ritual space with me. Super, I needed it too. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the recording, and just, I'm gonna give you a big mwah, kiss, a big grat uh, gesture of gratitude. Thank you, thank you for being here with me, ladies. And uh, I'm gonna turn this off.